Hey guys, and welcome back to Mulberry Branch Farm. It's Ashley here with you again. And today I'm going to teach you how to draw blood from your goat. There are a lot of reasons why it's a good idea to know how to draw blood from your goat. The biggest reason is biosecurity panel testing. This tests for CL, CAE, and Yoni's disease. These are the three big diseases that a lot of different goat breeders will test for to check on the health of their herd. Not to mention, you can also use blood tests to test your goats for pregnancy. And today, I'm going to be pulling blood from 13 different goats for just that reason. I'm doing my biosecurity panel testing, and I'm going to be doing a pregnancy check on 12 does that we recently had bred. If any of you have been around on our channel long enough, you know that we've just wrapped up with our breeding season within the last 30 days. And that's a good tidbit of information to know if you're going to be learning how to draw blood for pregnancy test, you need to wait until 30 days after the last coverage date for your doe. This gives the proteins that need to show up in the blood enough time to develop into noticeable trace amounts so that the blood test actually works. My overall goal for you today after watching this video is for you to have a working knowledge on how to draw blood from your goat along with the materials and different paperwork depending on the labs that you use to do this testing that you're going to need to have in order to set yourself and your goat up for success. So let's go over some of those materials. So the first couple of things that you're going to need on hand for my goats in this specific purpose, I really like to draw blood with a six cc or six millimeter syringe paired with a 20 gauge needle. And you can see I've got the louver locks on the top. You just twist and it makes it nice and easy and you can just wreath sheath that and it's nice and safe to carry around. It's really important that you don't reuse needles or syringes in this case. You don't want to put trace amounts of one goat's blood into another goat's blood sample. So if you're going to be drawing blood from five different goats, make sure that you've got five different needles and five different syringes. The next method that you might see a lot of people draw blood with will be some supplies that you can actually get from a lot of labs. I'm using UBRL, which is the Universal Biomedical Research Laboratory to conduct these different tests. And on their site, I can go and buy different materials and supplies to do these tests. I do use them when it comes to the red top tubes. The red top tubes are really important because they're vacuum sealed and this is what's actually going to hold your blood sample for you to send it along to the lab for them to test. Now, one thing that some people like to use, but I tend not to use, but will show how to use them in this video. My red top tubes came with a needle holder and a double-sided needle. So how these work is you've got your needle holder and you're just gonna take this off here. Just give it, most time just like a twist. And you can see this part actually goes down into the red top tube. But you'll notice it does have a little rubber sleeve and you're just, oopsie daisy. You're just going to pull that off and you're going to go ahead and screw it in to your needle holder. And when you're ready to start drawing blood on the goat, you're going to take your red top tube and you're just going to gently insert it in the, in the top. You don't want to put it all the way down just because this is kind of what helps to create suction when you push this red top tube up and in it. And then when you're ready to actually draw after you found your jugular vein and everything, you're just going to take off this top and you're going to guide this needle into the jugular vein. You'll see blood will start to pour down into your vial. Some people like to use this method. I like to use the syringe and I take my syringe afterward and just put it in the same red top too. So that's something to consider when you're getting ready to do this. I think it's good if you're a first timer to have both of these on hand. You might try one and not really get a good feel for it and try the other and decide that's the method that you want to use. I was taught with a 6 cc syringe and an 18 gauge needle. Now the lab did said a 20 gauge needle. I don't like using 20 gauge needles because they're a little bit smaller than the 18 gauge needle. And I find that the 18 gauge needle allows for the blood to flow into my syringe just a little bit easier. And some labs will have a choice whether you want a 20 gauge or an 18 gauge. My lab didn't. The next thing that you want to have on hand is going to be cotton balls or rubbing alcohol wipes. I pair this with rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol that you can get at CVS, Walmart, any of those places. And you're going to need this because this is going to be used to actually um, clean and swab the area that you're going to be placing your needle. You don't want to be entering in any other contaminations or create a breeding ground for an infection when you're actually drawing the blood because you're leaving that wide open. So you want to make sure that you clean it before you're putting that needle in. 
The next thing, and some people use these, some people don't. If you're squeamish and you don't like blood getting on your hands, latex gloves are going to be a must. It makes it real easy for you just to peel them off. I won't be using these in, these in the video, but these are always good to have on hand anyways. The next thing that I'm going to show you is optional, but if you're a first timer, I'm going to recommend that you have a good set of clippers. The reason you're going to want to have clippers is so that you can clip the draw site. I'm going to be drawing blood in the winter time. Obviously it's cold here and my goats are reflecting that with their big, nice, fluffy coats of fur. But that makes it a little hard to find a jugular vein. Now I'm well practiced so I can find it without having to shave, but if you're new, it is nice to shave the jugular vein or the site where you're going to be in placing your needle so that you can see what you're doing. And it's going to help you to recognize the balloon of the jugular vein that we're going to go over here in just a little bit. So while it's optional, if you're new, I really think you should have clippers on hand. And this next thing is essential for a successful blood draw. And that's going to be a good goat holder. This can be a spouse, a friend, a sibling, um, just somebody that you have around that is willing to hold a goat still and can take good directions while an animal is struggling. The reason you need to have somebody to hold your goat or something is to make sure that you're reducing that probability of an accidental stick to either the goat or you. And keeping them controlled is also going to make your job a lot easier in locating and putting a needle into a jugular vein. If you don't have somebody with you, fear not, there are plenty of tutorials out where they're using just this. They're using only a milk stand or a maintenance station that holds the goat's head still. It's better to have a person on hand, but if you don't, that milk stanchion will be just fine too. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have on hand is a permanent marker. The permanent marker is going to be used to mark your vials so that your samples don't get mixed up. So in my case today, I'm going to be drawing blood on 13 different goats. It's going to get pretty chaotic. And I'm going to have to make sure that between each goat, I stop, grab my permanent marker, and write that goat's name on the vial so that their sample doesn't get mixed up with somebody else. Another really good practice is to be very familiar with the lab that you're going to be sending your samples to. Some labs will be very specific on the amount of blood that they need to do the specific tests that you're requesting. So for my lab, they ask for two milliliters of blood or two cc's. So anything below that, I might not get an accurate reading. They might not have enough blood to do the big three plus a pregnancy test. So you need to make sure that you're going to be drawing an accurate amount of blood so that they can do the test you want them to do. And fear not, I'm going to make sure that I link a bunch of different labs down below that do do those tests. Outside of the regular laboratories, I have found that the universities that run the agricultural extensions for each state. So I'm in Indiana, so Purdue University runs our extension for Indiana. A lot of those universities will run these lab tests for you. Just make sure that you go online, read what they offer, see what their pricing is, and if it works for you, go with them. Also, if you're unable to find some of those materials or you've chosen a lab that does not provide you with the red top tubes or you're unsure of where to go get syringes or needles, I'm going to go ahead and link those down below. Now these are going to be Amazon links, so that means that they're affiliate links, which means if you choose to use them, I could get a small commission at no extra charge to you, but I wanna make sure that you guys have all of that supplies at your fingertips once you're done with this video. I'm going to pull in two goats here for you guys to watch me draw blood on. The first one, I'm going to be using a 6cc syringe paired with an 18 gauge needle. And the other, I'm going to be using the red top tube paired with the needle holder and the double sided needle so that you can see how both go. If you are new at pulling blood from a goat, you may need to get your clippers out and to clip the area. This is going to allow you to actually see the jugular vein and it's going to help you guide your needle into that vein and make the whole drawing process a lot easier. Once you've located your jugular vein and clipped the area, it's time to swab it with rubbing alcohol. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do to prep your goat to draw blood is to actually locate the jugular vein. And I apply pressure right where the neck meets the chest and the shoulders. It almost comes down into a perfect V. When I hold the pressure there, it actually makes the jugular vein balloon. If you're having trouble locating your jugular vein, it's okay to go to the corner of the jaw on your goat and follow that down. The jugular vein usually runs right alongside the windpipe on both sides of the neck. If you start at the jawline, you should be able to feel it and trace it all the way down. To smoothly insert your needle in an upward motion into the jugular vein up towards the jawline it should feel soft. 
Once you see blood entering into your syringe, hold your needle still and gently draw down the plunger. Once you've drawn the appropriate amount of blood, remove the needle and hold pressure on the puncture site as it may bleed a little. You may need to have other cotton balls or swabs ready to help staunch the blood flow. And here you can see that I'm just placing my syringe into the top of my red top tube. And because it's vacuum sealed, it's automatically pulling in all the blood. I don't even really need to touch the plunger. Now in this instance, you can see I'm using the double-sided needle paired with the red top tube that my lab actually supplied to me. Now there are some advantages to using that double-sided needle paired with the red top tube that your lab may have supplied you. You're not going to have to gently pull down on the plunger to extract the blood. Usually once you hit the jugular vein, the vacuum seal for your red top tube is going to do a lot of the work for you, though I find that the flow is a little bit slower and that could be due to the fact that the lab sent me 20 gauge needles, whereas with the syringe I'm using an 18 gauge needle. Alright guys, we're done drawing all of our blood. We've marked all of our red top tubes and we're getting ready to ship them out. My donkey's getting impatient. So now the next step is going to be packaging up our blood and sending it off to our lab for them to actually perform the tests. Each lab is a little bit different and a lot of them might send you directions on how to ship your package and how to mark it because believe it or not, Blood samples need to be marked a specific way when they're going through the mail. Who'd have thought? Most of these labs will also provide you with sample submission paperwork, which you'll have to fill out with your goat's name, usually an identification number on the tube or the number that you've set on the tube yourself, so they actually know what tests you want to run and what samples match which vials that are being shipped to them. So make sure that you're reading these directions and let's go inside and let's get this packaged up and ready to go. I'm going to be bundling up my samples um, in a max of 10. So I'm going to rubber band all of these together. I will be covering them with paper towels or newspaper, something that's really absorbent just in case one of them breaks and leaks in the process of shipping to the lab. Next, I'm going to place these inside the biohazard bag that was provided. And for the test that I've chosen to have done on my goats, it's really important that I keep these samples cool on their way from here in Indiana all the way to the UVRL lab in California. So that means I'm going to have to pack it with some ice packs. Once these are all packaged and ready to be shipped off, I'm going to make sure that on the outside of my box, I'm going to print important, exempt animal specimen. This is just a little bit of a flag. There are specimens inside this box and to please handle it with care. Once you've shipped these off to your lab, it's literally a waiting game. Different labs do different tests on different days and they might notify you via phone, email, or letter, depending on however you've marked the appropriate paperwork. Mine will be coming back through email, and while I'm sending mine out on Monday, I probably won't get all my test results until Friday based on the UBRL's testing schedule. And I've chosen to have my results given to me via email. So I will hopefully be able to share those with all of you next week. So I hope you guys have found this video to be somewhat helpful in how to draw blood for your biosecurity panel testing or pregnancy checks and how to package them up and send them off to your lab for testing. If you found this helpful, make sure you let me know by dropping me a like, leaving me a comment, and subscribing. But if you decide to subscribe, make sure that you're ringing that notification bell so you don't miss out on anything going on here at Mulberry Ranch Farm. And I will be sharing my pregnancy and biosecurity panel testing results with you guys once they come in, and we'll be going over what that means for us here on Mulberry Ranch Farm in the future. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Make sure that you're staying safe out there and being kind to one another. And we're going to catch you in the next one. Bye.